Alhamdulillah wa shukrulillah. One of the early Imams of our tradition, Ibn Ata'illah, he says, Ida aratta an ta'rifa qadraka indahu, fandur fi madha yuqimuk. Ida aratta an ta'rifa qadraka indahu, fandur fi madha yuqimuk. And this uh, expresses one of the foundational guiding principles of the mu'min, one of the foundational guiding principles of the believer, which translate the, this principle translates to that if you want to know, if you want to know where you stand with him, if you want to know your place with him, your rank with him, then look carefully, observe where he places you. Look carefully and observe where he keeps you. And so one of the most important foundational questions for the believer when the believer engages in introspection, self-examination, as the philosophers say, the unexamined life is not worth living. So that's true for the believer. The, the believer is a person of ma'rifatun nafs, knowledge of the self, that one of the first questions they ask is, fi madha aqamani? You know, where is he placing me? Where is he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, placing me? What are my days and nights like? And where, where, does my want, where does my mind wander? Especially in the prayer. And one of the most important litmus tests or measures, gauges, for where one is with Allah Ta'ala is the Salat itself. What is the quality of our prayers? Quantity, it's, with our busy lives in the modern world, it's very difficult to take on a lot of quantity. We should strive to increase, but one thing that we can all do, irrespective, regardless of you know, how busy we are with our obligations in the world, is to look at the quality of our prayers. What's the quality of our salawat? The five obligatory prayers are the most important, and then any other of the sunan, emphasize sunnas. Where are our hearts during the prayer? Where are our minds during the prayer? Is the prayer filled with light and illumination and remembrance of Allah Ta'ala and the existential states of the heart that are appropriate for the prayer, like gratitude, like contentment, like expressing need for Allah, like Haiba, having reverential awe for the divine, like Hayat, like having, having, like having shame and modesty before the divine majesty, like uh, ultimately love, the sunnah of our Prophet وسلم, is to pray with love. He is Habibullah وسلم. What are our existential, or do we have such existential states during the prayer? Or, is the mind wandering in the valleys of dunya. That I need to take care of this, and as soon as the prayer is over, I have to check off that, and then there's this other thing, and by the way, I need to text this person, there's that email I have to send. And it's a litany and a list of ghafla. The valleys and the alleyways of ghafla, heedlessness. And this is something prohibited by the text of the Qur'an, وَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ Do not be amongst those that are heedless, in particular in the Salat. We ask Allah for afiyah. So, just a few nights ago was the commemoration of the Isra wal Mi'raj, the 27th of Rajab, which many ulama say it happened on that night. And the Isra wal Mi'raj was the night in which the prayer was ob obligated. The most practical reflection that we take from that sublime night, and there are innumerable points of reflection and contemplation that we can have with respect to the blessed night journey and heavenly ascension of our Prophet ﷺ. But of the most important, the most important, practically speaking, is the Salat. And so the Salat is also our opportunity to have some type of ascension. When our hearts, are stuck in the mud of dunya, we're not ascending in our prayers. When our hearts are, you know, moving, guiding, being, being swayed right and left and this way and that way with dunya, we're not, are, are, we're not ascending in our prayers. But when our hearts are having those sublime, prophetic, Quranic, existential states of gratitude, of contentment, of reverential awe and fear of the divine and his majesty, Jalla Thana'uhu, of 
uh, satisfaction in the divine decree of modesty and shame before Allah Ta'ala, of paying attention, being present, and ultimately of love, then we're having some type of mi'raj of the heart. That is a type of ascension, and it is a sublime ascension. So insofar as the obligation of the prayer occurred on that night is a reflection, it corresponds to the potential, the invitation that, that our hearts have in our prayers. And so this is something as now we enter into Sha'ban, Allahumma barik lana fi Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. May Allah give us barakah in this month and may Allah Ta'ala allow us to reach Ramadan and to have the best Ramadan of our lives. That this is a, something that we can make a concrete goal of ours. That between now and Ramadan, to really be committed to focusing on the prayer. Making sure the five are prayed on time and making sure that when we pray, we are present. The Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in the hadith, that when the man asked for advice and the Prophet said ﷺ, Sadli Salat Muaddi'ah, you know, pray the prayer of someone bidding farewell. Imam al Ghazali, rahimahullah, in his Ihyan al Madin, he says, A Muaddi' li nafsihi wa hawahu wa umrihi, sa'irun ila rabbihi. Yeah, he says, yani, that meaning bidding farewell to one's ego, to one's pride, and to every mundane, worldly concern of their lives, and, tr and, and moving, tra traveling to his Lord. This is the, and the takbira, you know, even the motion, subhanAllah, like, Allahu Akbar, it's like we're casting the dunya behind us. We're getting rid of these. The dunya is gonna be, it's gonna be there when we get done. It's not going anywhere, and those obli the all obligations will get done. The more we focus on Allah Ta'ala, the more help he will give us, inshallah, with those obligations. So it's not worth it, even from a worldly, even from a, you know, a, a utilitarian perspective of advantage, it's disadvantageous to do that, let alone for one's relationship with Allah, let alone vis-a-vis -vis the sharia, let alone for the welfare of one's akhirah. And so cast out, casting back the dunya and entering into presence with Allah. And uh, Ammar ibn Yasir, the great companion, radiallahu anhu, that he, he was once seen praying a short prayer. It was a short prayer, it did not take very long. And the, his you know, companions asked him, and he said, did you see me falling short on any of the obligations, the rights of the prayer? They said, no, you did it properly, but it, it was a bit short. He said, I wanted to outdo the shaitan affecting me. I wanted to get, get, in other words, to have full concentration, better to have a shorter prayer with excellent con concentration, with excellent quality, then a long prayer where the mind is just wandering this way, this way and the other. The dunya, what is the value of the dunya? Our Prophet taught us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said in the hadith of the jami of Imam Tirmidhi, a dunya mal'unatun mal'unun ma fiha. You know, the dunya, mal'un means distant from Allah's mercy. It's far from Allah's mercy. And everything in it is far from Allah's mercy. Except for what? Illa dhikrullah. Except for the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah is remembered, now the mercy is there. When Allah is remembered, now there is illumination. When Allah is remembered, now there is enlightenment. When Allah is remembered, now there is virtue. When Allah is remembered, now there is good. When Allah is remembered, now there is beauty. Beauty is the only delight of the soul. The soul delights in beauty, and that's in the remembrance of Allah. Illa dhikrullah, wa ma wala, and everything that Allah loves. So we're in the world, we have to be in the world. This is where Allah Ta'ala placed us. But if we are engaged in Allah's remembrance, true remembrance, with focus and attention, if, if we are committed to fulfilling the rights of Allah Ta'ala, staying away from disobedience to Him, focusing on what he, is He pleased with. وَعَالِمٌ وَمُتَعَلِمٌ The hadith concludes, and a possessor of sacred knowledge and a learner of sacred knowledge. Those are, according to the hadith, where there is divine mercy and illumination. And in the riwayah of Imam Tabarani, in his Mu'jim Kabir, the same hadith with the different wording, dunya mal'unatun mal'unun ma fiha. This dunya is distant from Allah's mercy, and everything in the dunya is distant from Allah's mercy, illa mabtughya bihi wajhullah. Except when Allah's countenance is sought. Except when Allah's countenance is sought. In other words, whatever we're doing in the dunya, if we seek Allah Ta'ala in it, 
If we are doing it for the sake of Allah Ta'ala, if we're hoping for the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala, whether it be our work, whether it be our families, whether it be whatever our obligations are, then it's not mal'oon anymore. It's not distant from Allah's mercy. It is near to Allah's mercy. We ask Allah Ta'ala for tawfiq, that we have lives filled with His remembrance subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore the mercy and light of Allah and that most importantly our prayers are filled, filled with that illumination. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfirullah inna Allah ghafurur rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallillahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammad al Nabi Ulumi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tasliman kathira. Our Prophet emphasized, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the value, the tremendous value, and the windfall that we get when we make remembrance of Allah Ta'ala. And he, he said in the hadith in that, that is related by Imam al Bukhari in his Sahih, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Mathulul ladhi yathkuru rabbahu wa ladhi la yathkuru rabbahu, Mathulul hayyi wal mayyit. That the example of the one that makes remembrance of Allah compared to the one that is forgetful of Allah, is like the example of the living and the dead. Like the example of the living and the dead. What's the difference between life and death? Is there a larger gulf of difference? Is there a larger vastness of difference between life and death? Thus, what's the difference between a believer committed to remembrance of Allah Ta'ala, starting with the prayer and extending then to their worldly obligations, the the places that Allah places us in the world vis-a-vis -vis, vis -vis someone who is heedless, forgetful of Allah Ta'ala. The Prophet emphasized, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that uh, Allah, Allah Ta'ala describes, how does Allah Ta'ala describe the Blessed Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with, with respect to the night of Isra wal Mi'raj, the first ayah of Surah Al-Isra, Subhan al-ladhi asra bi'abdihi laylan. مِنَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ الْأَقْصَ الَّذِي بَارَكْنَا حَوْلَهُ لِنُرِيَهُ مِنْ آيَاتِنَا إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ How glorious and exalted. It begins with dhikr. Allah makes remembrance of Himself. سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي أَسْرَى How glorious and exalted and sublime and august and majestic is the one that took by night عَبْدِهِ His servant. And the ulama mentioned that in the context of the most noble worldly time of the Prophet ﷺ, the most noble and honor, honorable incident of the Prophet ﷺ in this life, why? Because Ibn Abbas relates, as, Tabara, as Tabarani relates, that Ibn Abbas relates that the Prophet said, وسلم, Rabbi. On that night, he saw his Lord. And so, in the maqam that Allah Ta'ala raised the Prophet such that he actually had vision of Allah Ta'ala in a way we cannot understand rationally that what is the description that the Prophet was given Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bi abdihi Subhan alladhi asra bi abdihi Thus, the most noble state that we can aspire to is ubudiyah lillah is to be true and authentic, genuine servants of Allah Ta'ala people of ubudiyah, people of true slavehood and servanthood to Allah Ta'ala and the slave is there for Allah and one of the most beautiful manifestations, going back to the prayer, which was obligated on that night, one of the most beautiful manifestations of the ubudiyah of the mu'min, the true slavehood and servanthood of the believer, is in the sajda. أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونَ الْعَبْ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدٍ That the Prophet described, sallallahu alayhi wa the closest that the servant is to his Lord is in the, in the sajda. Reflect on the sajda. So if the beginning of the prayer is casting back the dunya so we can focus and have dhikr of Allah Ta'ala, then the most important part of the prayer, the sajda, is when the face of the believer, which is the most noble part of the human being, is on the face of the earth, which is the lowest part of creation, in the sense that it is what everyone steps on. Allah made it dhalul. Allah, Allah flattened this earth so, so it could be walked over. It is lowly and abased. The word abased is related to base because base is bottom. So it's literally the place of abasement. And what, so we take the most noble part of our being, of our physical form, and we place it on the lowest thing between the heavens and earth. What does that lead to? Effacement. Effacement. That the ego is sublimated. And what's the result of a sublimated ego when the ego is 
rubbed down, abd, ubudiyah, true servitude to Allah. That, oh Allah, I'm not bringing my own self and all of these rusum, all of these, uh, the, what we identify with when we think of our place and our position and our prestige and our success and all of that dunya we, all the mirage, all of that illusion and delusion of the ego, that the ego gets puffed up from blessings that Allah gives it, arrogant on the earth, arrogant vis-a-vis -vis other people because of blessings from Allah Ta'ala, but in the sajda, it's all gone. Where is our resume in the sajda? Where is our prestige in the sajda? What's left when, we are if, when the ego is effaced because the face is on the face of the earth? Ubudiya lillah. True slavehood. Humble servitude to Allah. Oh Allah, here I, labbaik, here I am at your service. And that's the closest that we are to Allah Ta'ala because it wasn't about physical proximity that night. The Prophet was raised, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, past the low tree, not because Allah is located in a place, but because Allah Ta'ala is showing the world His maqam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But we have an opportunity for sublime ascension when we go down in the sajda. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us people of utter need of Allah Ta'ala and ubudiyah to Allah Ta'ala, slavehood and authentic, genuine servitude to the divine. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make our hearts fill of, filled with gratitude and remembrance of Allah and the illumination and mercy of Allah Ta'ala that comes with that. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us people who are realized in our prayers and therefore realized in all of our activities in this world. Allahumma barik, barik lana fi Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. اللهم إننا نسألك العافية في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم إننا نسألك تمام العافية ودوام العافية والشكر على العافية والغنى عن الناس ربنا أتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة